The earliest fossil record of Albertosaurus is about 80 million years old. This animal in its external features really isn't all that different from Tyrannosaurus rex, but when you start looking at specific characteristics, there are features which suggest it is more primitive than Tyrannosaurus rex itself. But who was T. rex's closest relative? Opinion is divided between two candidates. One from North America, known as Despletosaurus, and another from Asia, known as Tarbosaurus. Tarbosaurus is an animal that originally was called Tyrannosaurus as well. It uh, has a number of differences, but when you start looking at other specifics, uh, for example, the orientation of the back of the skull in relation to the neck, Tarbosaurus shows a lot of characters that uh, suggest to me at least that it may be more closely related to Tyrannosaurus rex. But a recent find from Montana convinces Jack Horner of T. rex's American ancestry. Despletosaurus is the animal that, that I believe and, and, and some others also believe was actually the predecessor of Tyrannosaurus rex. In other words, its ancestor. Tyrannosaurus rex was the descendant of Despletosaurus. Tyrannosaurs, they have a big horn over top of their eye. And we see, we see it very dominant in Tyrannosaurus rex. We see it less dominant in this particular animal that is related to Despletosaurus, and even less so in the more primitive Despletosaurus. The ancestry puzzle may take a long time to solve, but one trend is clear. As the Tyrannosaur family evolved, they not only grew larger, they changed to cope with their increased size. There are a lot of changes that are necessary if you're going to become a large animal. And uh, this is particularly true when we're talking animals like the meat-eating dinosaurs, because essentially they were teeter-totters. They were animals where the front of the body was balanced by the tail on a fulcrum, which was at the hips. Now in Tyrannosaurus's case, as it got bigger, the head became disproportionately larger, and that's to house all those very large, vicious-looking teeth. Consequently, we see a lot of specializations in Tyrannosaurus that are meant to bring the body weight down in front of the hips. The skull is uh, a long, heavy skull, but many of the bones, in fact, are air-filled. The neck has been recurved much more so than in earlier meat-eating dinosaurs, simply because by doing that, it could bring the head back closer to the hips and shift the center of gravity further back as well. Finally, and probably most conspicuously, if you look at the front limbs of Tyrannosaurs, they've become also extremely short. They were relying on their head to do the killing. The limbs could be shortened up and would give it a great savings in weight on the front end of the body. And it was one more of the adaptations that Tyrannosaurus picked up. Ever since the first skeleton of T-Rex was assembled 80 years ago, most people have assumed that the king of dinosaurs must have been a slow and lumbering beast. But that view is changing. From this position, one gets a sense of what an enormous animal Tyrannosaurus rex really is. In fact, this animal is so big and so massive that for a long time, everybody thought that this had to be a slow-moving animal. In recent years, though, we've been looking more closely at the anatomy of the hind leg of these dinosaurs. And what we see is not necessarily what we expected to see. The relative proportions of the individual leg bones of Tyrannosaurus give us an idea of how fast this animal could be. Now, in fast-moving animals like ostriches, the upper leg bone is relatively short compared to the lower leg bones. In Tyrannosaurus, we see the same kind of pattern. Lower bones are as long or longer than the upper bones. This uh, continues, in fact, down into the foot, where if we look at the flat of the foot, or what would be the flat of the foot in a human being, this unit is also very long. All in all then, if we look at the characters that we see in the hind legs of Tyrannosaurus, I don't think there's any question at all that 
In spite of its massive size, this is an animal that was built for speed, and it's an animal that, in fact, could outrun any of its potential prey in its world. But Jack Horner has studied the same evidence and drawn the opposite conclusion. He is convinced that T-Rex was a walker, not a runner. If we look at the leg bones of a meat-eating dinosaur, uh, named Troodon, what we see is a thigh bone and a shin bone that have different lengths. We see that the thigh bone is shorter than the shin bone. And this is true of every single one of the non-tyrannosaurs. We see the same thing in ostriches. We see the same thing in emus and rheas and, and all these running birds. Animals that run fast have a short thigh bone and a long shin bone. The primitive feature is running. That means in evolution, you have to evolve legs for walking because there were no dinosaurs that were adapted for walking before we get to the tyrannosaurs. If we look at tyrannosaurs, the thigh bone and the shin bone are either the same length or the thigh bone is, a, is slightly longer than the shin bone. This is a feature that is good for walking. But the high plains of New Mexico may offer more direct evidence of exactly how fast T-Rex really moved. Martin Lockley follows the trail of fossilized footprints across North America. He has seen and cataloged thousands. But one footprint receives special treatment. It's so unique that its location is a tightly guarded secret. We're inside a high security area in the New Mexico backcountry. This fenced enclosure contains this extraordinary and unique fossil footprint. This is the only Tyrannosaurus footprint anywhere in the world. This footprint was probably made not far from some river in the mud, and then it was filled in when the river flooded and washed a sheet of sand over this trampled area. This is the casting that was filled in by sand, now sandstone. This track is on the order of um, three feet long, it's uh, two feet wide, and it's almost a, a foot deep. This was made by an animal that probably weighed in at around uh, five tons. It's sitting on a block that's about nine feet long. There isn't a second footprint in that space, so that this means a minimum step of about nine feet. And if we calculate or estimate the speed of this animal, it was probably moving along at at least uh, 11 kilometers, something like six or seven miles per hour, which, which is, a, is a pretty good uh, clip. It would be a jog for a, a human being. The movements of modern birds can also shed light on how dinosaurs traveled. Jim Farlow studies Australian emus and their similarities to T-Rex. It would be nice to know what Tyrannosaurus was like as a living animal, but it's very inconveniently extinct. And if you want to get a picture of how it moved, what it might have been like when it was alive, it's helpful to look at modern animals that give us an approximation to something like Tyrannosaurus. And of such modern animals, I think the emu is about as good a model as one could hope to find. I suspect it's probably faster than Tyrannosaurus was. An, an emu in the wild can go, what, um, 50, maybe 60 kilometers an hour. Tyrannosaurus, obviously, we've no direct way of, of determining how fast it could go. But based on the calculations of the strength of its bones relative to the size of the animal, I would think that a, at a good ballpark figure for the top speed of Tyrannosaurus might be something on the order of 30, 40 kilometers per hour. If you look at the way this emu walks, the way it puts its feet one in front of the other, it's a striding walker. It doesn't hop like a kangaroo. 
And if you look at the way it picks up its feet as it goes, I think this is about as close to a Tyrannosaurus as we can find in our modern world. And that's part of the fascination that emus have for me. But emus and other modern birds without tails may not provide a completely accurate model. Other scientists pursue a more distant cousin. The animal I have here, and the reason I think crocodilians are worth spending a lot of time looking at, um, this is a saltwater crocodile, and it retains many of the features that we think the primitive dinosaur ancestor might have had. We know that birds and crocodilians are dinosaurs' closest living relatives, and so they're the logical place to look for information on how T-Rex works. The muscle that I've spent a lot of time looking at um, originates from the side of the tail. As you can see, crocodilians have a long, heavy, muscular tail. And along here where my fingers are is a large muscle that runs forward to attach onto the thigh bone, the femur. What we see in modern birds is that the tail itself has been reduced dramatically. Most of what we see in a bird tail is actually just feathers rather than muscle and bone. 